you guys, it's Coffee, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this, which is the thumbnail that you guys maybe had seen in a video already. I'm pretty sure that was the video that went up yesterday, if I'm not mistaken, or like maybe sometime last week. I'm pre-filming a lot of things because my mom's coming into town, so uh, I'm not actually sure if you've seen this or not, but this is for my The Power of Custom Content video that I did, or am doing, if you haven't seen it, <laughs> and uh, basically we're going to be creating that today. This this, if you did not know, the month of April is Coffee Teaches, where I'm dedicating at least two videos a week to teaching you guys something that I feel like is good to know if you're an, an aspiring YouTuber or you're already a YouTuber and you just want to know some different skills that maybe you don't already know. I do want to preface this video by saying I am by no means a professional. Like I know a lot of you guys consider me to be, but everything that I have learned is self-taught. I did not go to school to learn these things. I probably do things the harder way in the sense that I feel like some people know way more tips and tricks when it comes to using Photoshop. We are going to be using Photoshop today. That's what I do my thumbnails with and sometimes Lightroom. I don't know if we're going to go into Lightroom or not today. If we do, we'll wait and see, but some... Um, Basically, uh, I'm just I'm just letting you guys know that some of these things, there might be simpler ways to do them. This is just how I do it. Uh, it has taken me up to this point. We're almost four years into the YouTube thing. The YouTube thing. I don't even know what that means. We're four years into this channel and I swear I learned something new in Photoshop every day, like every day. So just, you know, this is what I've learned up to this point. Uh, I did a Sims 3 thumbnail maker a few years ago. It is nothing like how I do things now. So as a YouTuber, you are constantly evolving and changing and how I do things now might not be th how I do things down the road. And the second thing I want to say before we get started, sorry, I know it's like longest intro ever. Second thing I want to say before we jump into it is, you know, please try to hone your own style. I know that some of the things I do might be similar to other YouTubers. Nobody can coin any kind of thumbnail, in my opinion. I really don't feel that way. I feel like you can't. Like, it's just too wide of an audience and too, like, there's too many of us. There's such a saturation in the industry that nobody can really coin a specific idea. And I'm not saying that, like, this is mine and you can't use it. But, you know, try to put your own spin on things. I'm not going to be mad if I see a lot of thumbnails turn up like mine. I mean... If anything, I think it's kind of flattering, but you know, just, just try to put your own spit on things. Teach yourself skills, guys. Look tutorials up, look at different things. Uh, that's, that's basically it, you know, make your own style. But anyways, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I do is I come up here in the top left and I go file. I'm going to hit new and I'm going to use the aspect ratio or the, uh, the pixelation size of 1280 over 720, so by width and height. I have my resolution set to 72. I have RG, RGB, which I think is like RGB or like, it's like, anyway, color, 8-bit. I have this set to transparent, which I don't think that's default. I'm not sure. Uh, and I don't know if these things even matter. Like, I have no idea how this works. So, you know, that's what we're looking at so far. Um, so it comes up like this when you hit OK. Now, I'm actually going to be using some background images. You can make your own backgrounds. I will show you really quickly how I do like basic backgrounds. I will pick a color. So let's say we're going to do really dark blue. And then we're going to click this second box over here. Sorry, in the left over here where my mouse is. We're going to click that same blue. So you have this like dropper tool on your mouse. You see what I'm talking about? You're going to click this same blue. And then you're just going to bring it over to a much lighter shade. Then you're going to take this box on the side right here. It kind of looks like a like it's darker on one side, lighter on the other. You're going to click on that. This is going to be the uh, gradient tool, I think is what they call that. And you just click, drag your mouse up, and you get something like that. So that's like one way you can do a background. You can even drag it farther. Um, I did this recently in one of my, I think it was like a custom content or it was like a mod overview I used this technique. Um, you really want to make sure that you're playing with colors as well. Like it doesn't hurt to pull up a color wheel if you want to, which let me just like open my Chrome really quick and I'll pull one up for you guys so you can see. So it doesn't hurt to pull up a color wheel so you can actually see. I like the ones that are really detailed. I'll go to like images on Google. I like the ones that are really detailed, like... Uh, this one would be good. This one's a good one too. Um, I've actually used these quite a few times. 
You could even save this and pull it onto your image to pick colors from it. But uh, basically, like whatever you use as your background for text, I use a lot of black and white, but for text, which we'll get into in a little bit, you always want to, if you're going to use a color, try to use a complementary color, which is on the opposite side of the color you used. So today I'm actually going to be using probably mostly black and white, which you guys already saw the thumbnail in its completion form, but I'm still making it during this. It's kind of weird. Like you guys got to see the future before it was there. Well, sort of, I don't know, hard to explain. Um, so this is really, this is a really, really, really good thing to use when you're designing your thumbnails, you know, and thumbnails, like they're not like the biggest deal, but they definitely like, if you're trying to get more viewership, I guess, on your channel. They definitely help people, you know, will judge your thumbnail before they judge the video. And granted, if they click on the video and the content isn't the best, like everybody starts somewhere, guys. Don't be hopeful, you know. Um, but like thumbnails, I feel like really will help improve your channel if this is something that you're after. Uh, I meant to say that at the beginning of the video. This video is going to be all over the place. <laughs> okay, so I'm actually not doing this today. Um, I'm going to actually open up my files and, um, I'm going to put this here and use it. So I have this image of like a marble background. I've used this a lot for my like banner on my channel looks like this. All of my Twitch stuff is marble. I'm going to go ahead and hold down my shift key. And what that's going to do is it's going to lock the size in place. So if I don't hold shift, see how it just kind of like bounces all around. So let me undo that. If you hold down the shift key and drag the corners out, it kind of keeps its shape, which you want because you don't want it to get like stretched really weird. I'm going to do it down down here just to kind of resize it to the mat that I have. Hit the check mark up here and I'm going to go ahead and adjust the brightness and contrast right here. It says adjustments. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to make this a smidge brighter and I'm also going to bring down the contrast just a bit. I like it a little more faded in the back. So there's that. Up next, I'm going to go back to my files. I'm actually going to go to my desktop and I'm going to grab this circle that I found. Um, ignore my desktop. It's a freaking mess. Just going to drag and drop that onto the scene and it actually fits perfectly how I want it. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit this check mark and I'm actually going to change the color of the circle because right now I think this is what, like the China flag, except for it's like white on the back. Pretty sure. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm actually going to double click this circle. It brings this up and I'm going to go ahead and do color overlay. And then you're going to click this box where the color is and you can change it to whatever you want. I'm going to go for kind of like a corally pink, I think for this. So actually we're going to go down to the oranges. Oops, not that orange. Okay. Kind of like this, like a peachy color, I think. That looks nice. I like that. Okay, so we can go ahead and hit OK. And then right here, make sure you have the layer selected. See how it's kind of highlighted right here. You're going to go ahead and click on this opacity bar right here. And I'm going to drag it down. Okay, that's too far. Just to kind of make it a little sheer, give it a little bit of oomph, you know, a little something, something. So there's that. This is going to be the base for our thumbnail. Um, up next, I'm going to actually grab the pictures that I have, which if you don't know where to find your pictures, you go into documents, electronic arts, the Sims four or three, if you're doing three, this could work for Sims three as well. And then here's all of the screenshots that I have for my game. So the power of CC that I did, she's like way down here, I think. Okay. So I need two pictures of her where she's doing the same pose. So I personally like love this pose, but I think I'm going to have a really hard time using it. So I kind of want to go for something that's a little more simple, even though this pose is like super freaking adorable. This one's cute though. So let's take a look. So we have this one. I like that. Okay. I like the side where her eye is open more, I think. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, you're going to come back over to this layer. It kind of like makes a new layer every time you do that. So like every time you drag and drop something in, uh, it makes like a new, like it puts it on as a new layer, which is awesome. So I'm going to go ahead, come over here and I'm going to right click on that layer and I'm going to click rasterize layer. This is going to enable it 
enable it so you can basically manipulate the layer a little more. I'm going to go ahead and uh, what am I going to do first here? I'm debating. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I think I'm going to cut the picture first. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to grab. Oh, this is going to be difficult. Okay. Nope, 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 nope. Okay. So I'm going to grab. Nope. <laughs> I'm trying to cut the picture like down the middle. This is probably like a bad thumbnail because I don't really do stuff like this all the time. Okay, that's better. So I'm going to grab all of this. And then so once you have it selected, I'm going to hit control. I'm going to hold down control and hit X. That's going to get rid of it. So bam, there's that. Now I'm going to grab this wand tool and I'm going to select this gray background. I'm going to do the same thing, select it, and then hit control X. Actually, wait, hold on. It kind of messed up right here. So I'm going to right click on this wand tool. I'm going to go to the quick selection tool. Make sure it's got the little minus. It's got like a circle with some dashes, a little paintbrush and like a minus E sign. I'm going to go through and kind of pull this back out. I'll go back and fix that. I just want to make sure it's not deleting parts of her shirt like it was. So now I'll go back to the magic wand tool. I'm going to do control X. I'm going to do it here as well. I'm going to get rid of this little itty bitty gray bit. Um, I think this will be okay. Cause remember thumbnails are kind of small. So if they're not perfect, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Just keep that in mind. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and make this bigger and I'm going to hit apply. I just want it to fill the space completely. So I'm going to center that and we may play with it a little bit. Like I might, oh, there we go. I might, um, I might like add some more like brightness to it or something as we're going. Uh, the second thing I want to do is actually put, uh, do I want to put a line? I haven't decided. I haven't decided if I want to put like an actual physical line in. I kind of think I do if I'm honest. So I think what I'm going to do is actually go down to layer one. Hold on. I'm going to just grab this. And then I'm going to, okay, sorry. Let me, let me explain what I'm doing here. So I'm going to go down to layer one where I made this thing. Um, if you didn't, you know what? Bad idea. Let me do this differently. So it'll make more sense to you guys. Um, I'm going to go ahead down here and click this button. It's, it looks like a little like sticky note and I'm going to click on that. It's going to make a new layer, which it made right here. I'm going to click on it, pull it up to the top. And I'm actually going to fill it. So I'm going to right click on our gradient tool and hit the paint bucket tool. And I'm going to make the color white. Then I'm going to just drop this. Don't worry. You did not ruin your image. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit this like square selection tool. And I'm just going to grab like a cylinder basically. Now I'm going to hold down control and hit X. So now you can see where this little like eye is right here. You're going to click that to get rid of it. Um, we'll deal with that layer later. Don't worry about it. Now I'm going to click on this layer where she is and I'm going to hit control, hold down control and hit V. That's going to paste it there. So now I'm not going to hold down shift because I want to kind of resize this how I see fit. I'm going to kind of, I think I am going to put a line in. So I've kind of resized it. I'm going to hit the check mark. Now I'm going to make sure I have the tool that allows me to just like pick things up. There we go. So this is going to be like a nice dividing line. So it doesn't have to be perfect and match up to her face. Exactly. I think ultimately that's going to be a more posh design. Um, I've seen a lot of people that have done the CC videos have the line. I ultimately think it like, not only is it like aesthetically pleasing, but I feel like it's, it just makes it to where you don't have to match the picture up. And you'll see what I mean in a second. It doesn't have to match up so perfectly. Okay, so now that we have that done, we're going to come back to our photos. And I'm going to look for a picture of her doing that same. Oh, do I really not have a picture? Oh, no, I do. I was about to say, do I not have a picture of her doing that? I'm going to be so mad. Okay, so here is the picture of her with no custom content doing the same face. So there's that. 
Um, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to right click on this, rasterize the layer. Then I'm going to get grab this little square selection tool and I'm going to try to cut the opposite side now. So let's see if we can do this right on the note. <laughs> okay, this is going to, oh no, 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 sorry. This is going to take a few tries. Also, if you want to like back up what you did, you can hold down control and hit Z and it will like back up whatever you just did. So let's try from right here. Hold on. I need to like control Z. I need to look at this layer really quick and see where it stops. Okay. So it stops literally in like the middle of her nose. So we need to go like right here. No. Oh my gosh. Stop it. Okay. From, no. <laughs> Why am I so bad at this? Okay. No. Okay. That's like perfect, I think. So we're just going to select all of this, hit control X, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to grab that magic wand tool. We're going to get rid of this side. Actually, it kind of did that perfect for me, I'm willing to say. We're going to grab our little mouse now and then resize the image. Hold down shift. Don't forget that. We are going to resize the image. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. And I'm going to try my best. Oh, no, that looks bad. Hold on. We got to bring it down. Okay. So this obviously needs to be a smidge bigger. Oh my gosh. This is, this is going to be a living nightmare. That's what this is going to be like. Cause I have to just like keep resizing it until it's perfect. Um, does that work? Not quite. Hold on. But that kind of works right there. Oh my gosh, why is this so hard? Okay, I think... Ugh, why does this look bad? I think this was a bad picture. This was like... This was a total fail. <laughs> Actually, no, I think her hairline just like isn't matching up where it should. So hold on. Let's see. Like, I don't know if it will though, because that's kind of where it would put it if it did match up. And that makes it like super lopsided. Maybe it would be better if we didn't have this bar in there. So let's get rid of this for just a second. I just want to see if it would look better without it, which it very well might. Oh, what did I just do? There we go. Um, I mean, it works. I don't know, guys. I don't think that looks very cute. Like it doesn't, it's not quite matched still. Like what the heck? I need the like hand to match up and it's not. So clearly this is not the right size. So I don't know if it needs to be bigger or smaller though. I'm convinced that maybe it needs to be a little smaller if I'm quite honest. Let's see what that looks like. Ugh, garbage, garbage. <laughs> this should not be this difficult. I'm thinking I maybe just picked a picture that doesn't look so good. So we're going to try a different one. Same concept though. I'm just going to try another one off camera, but like same concept. You get what I'm doing. So I'm going to pick a different picture and kind of start this process over and I'll meet you guys back when we're done with that.
Okay, guys, so this is what I came up with. I'm a little sad that I didn't put nail polish on her in these pictures, but I think ultimately this looks pretty good. Um, I think especially like if you're ever curious about how it's going to look sized down, you can click on this little zoom tool, make sure it's in the minus. Yeah, there's like a plus up here in the top right and a minus. Make sure it's on the minus. You can scale it way down just to see how it's going to look. So far, I like the look of this. I think this is going to be good. So I'm going to go ahead, bring it back up. It does look a little pixely around the edges but I'm really not too concerned about it so now that I have that in place I'm going to click this top layer which is layer three I'm going to go all the way down to my red dot hold down the shift key click the red dot and then I'm going to right click and go ahead and click merge layers so that made those all one piece which hopefully I don't regret that. <laughs> um, so that is what we have there. Now I'm going to go ahead and play with this just a little bit. I'm going to brighten this up a smidge. Um, I think I may also do some saturation and it, it will be a little different. You'll see what I mean in a second. I'm going to play up some saturation just a little. I'm just going to give that a little plus 12. Plus 12. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing. So this top layer is selected. I'm going to hold down my shift key, click on this layer where my picture is, and then I'm going to go ahead and hit merge layers. So that kind of takes it away from the backdrop, which is nice. Um, oh, you know what? I just realized I think I have flux on and that's, oh my gosh, changed my life. The picture looks so much better. Okay. Sorry guys. Flux like makes it to where your images or your screen is dimmer at night. So it doesn't like hurt your eyes. Ugh, that looks like how I want it to look. No wonder it looked like crap earlier. Okay. So this is what we're looking at here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, oh no, 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 no. Okay. I need to step backwards. Okay. See, this is why you don't merge the layers until you're sure. I'm just going to hit edit and undo, step backwards, step backwards, <laughs> step backwards, step backwards, step backwards. Okay. I don't want this red circle in there because you'll see why in a second. So I'm just going to click on layer three, hold shift, click on this last layer down here, even though like some of these aren't here because I like made them invisible. Uh, merge those layers and the invisible ones don't show up. So like if you uncheck the little eye, it makes those like go away basically. Okay. So this is what we're dealing with now. Uh, let me go ahead. Let me adjust this now. Like I wanted to. So we're going to go ahead and adjust just a little bit, just a little bit. Actually, that might even be like too much. It's just like that. And then we're going to adjust the saturation just a smidge. Okay. Now I'm going to do that same thing and collapse those layers, merge layers. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to see what I want to do here. I could, if you, okay. Whoa, sorry. I didn't explain any of that. You're going to right click on whatever layer you could do this in multiple layers too. I just think it's easier to not, I see that her hair is a little janky over here, but honestly, like I said, your images are so small most of the time that it's really not going to matter that much. And some people will differ on this with me, but to me, I feel like I don't want to sit here and take all the time. Plus I like, this is the only method I know how, I think I said that in the beginning. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on this. Sorry, not right click, double click. I'm going to select in this little drop down the stroke key. And that's how I get my outlines on my stuff. I'll just make it white by selecting the color right here. You click on this and then you can change it to whatever you want. Um, sometimes if it looks like really pixelated, if you make the line fatter, that kind of like goes away. So like I could do that. Or instead of the stroke, I could do an outer glow, which like, watch this. So I checked that. I'm going to go ahead and click on this little box where the color is, make it white. Uh, and then I'm going to hit the spread. I'm going to bring the spread up and then I'm going to bring the size up. So I could also do like a glow. You can also make the opacity not so like little. You can make it like more white. See what I'm saying? I think I liked the stroke more. I go back and forth between these two a lot, but... Honestly, I just, I don't know. I think the stroke feature looked better. Then I may also add a drop shadow. You just select this. Um, I like to make mine 100. I don't usually leave an opacity. I like it really dark. And then I will pull the distance out and see when I do that, like it makes it farther and farther away. 
So like, bam, I can make it like way out there. You can also change the angle from which it's like protruding out by clicking on this. I kind of like it right there. You can also change the color of your drop shadow right here. Like say I wanted my drop shadow to be blue or say I wanted it to be hot pink or say I wanted it to be this color. Ooh, that's actually kind of pretty. Hold on, let me see how that looks. Do I like that? It's interesting. I don't know if I like it though. I don't know. You can also, um, so if I do like that, I can take my drop shadow and wait, no, 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 no. I can click on this, this like the picture that I've been doing stuff with and I can go duplicate layer. And what that will do is it will make the drop shadow a little bit darker, but I'm not gonna do that today. We're just gonna hit the eye on that so it goes away. I don't know how I feel about this drop shadow yet. For now, I'm just gonna leave it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add some text. Um, I'm trying to decide how I wanna do this. It could be like the power of CC, the power of CC. I'm trying to think like, what's the best way I could design this? I could also take these two images, hold down the shift key, select them both, right click, and then click link layers. And what that does is if I just click one of them with my little like tool, I can drag all of it over. I actually almost would rather do that. What the heck is this? What is this? Oh my gosh. Okay, this is not bueno. So this, I'm glad that this actually happened because I can show you guys what happens when this happens. So sometimes if there's like excess on your image that you didn't get rid of and then you decide to like move it and shift it all around, you can take the eraser tool. Looks like a little eraser. Back in my day, we called them pink pearl erasers because I think that was like the brand. And you can just take this out because it's ugly and we don't want it there. We don't want it in our picture. You can do this for a lot of things in images. Like if you just don't like it, like right here, I think there's a little something, something. I'm using my bracket keys right next to like the P key and like the slash in between those. I'm using the bracket keys to make my brush bigger and smaller. Um, I think that also works in the Sims when you make like things bigger and smaller. So just like a little detail right here that I noticed this was like messed up. So I'm just gonna get rid of that. Um, okay, so I think I'm gonna put it here. I'm gonna go the power of CC. So a fun tip that I can give you guys for text. So let me show you how to add text and then I'll kind of like talk about things. So I'm gonna hit this, which is this little T and I'm going to dr like drag this out to a box. You're gonna click hold it while you drag out. And then it pops up with this. All of your stuff to change the text is up here at the top now. Right now, my two favorite texts um, are Bubba Snoo or Bebus, Beba Snoo, Beba Snoo, I don't know how to say it. And Black Fat, those are like my favorite texts. And also um, Always In My Heart is another good one. But I'm gonna go ahead and use the Beba Snoo. And I have it on 200 point right now and I have it in white. And I'm gonna do the so i'm gonna think i'm gonna leave it in white and then i'm just gonna hit the check mark and then i'm gonna do this again do this i'm going to type in power but for power i want this one to kind of stand out so i'm gonna make the word power black and don't worry we're gonna give this some more oomph when we get to it uh and i'm going to make this one be a different text and this is kind of what i was talking about like some of the little tricksies so i'm gonna make power be the black fat one that i like and then i'm gonna come in here i'm gonna hit this little check up here to kind of keep it i'm gonna do this one more time and we're gonna type of cc and i'm gonna make this white and we're gonna go back to the bebus new or is it BBS or Bebus? I don't know. I'm crazy. Okay, so we're gonna find Bebus new. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do here, I'm going to click over here on my layers. So like everything of text is a different layer. I'm gonna click on power first because this is the one. This is the word that I want to stick out the most. So I'm gonna click on power. Oh no no no. And see how my like cursor got like this little like back and forth arrow. I'm gonna twist this. I'm gonna also hold down my shift key, pull it out, make it a little bit bigger. 
just so it kind of like, I don't know, it looks a little exciting, you know, a little exciting. I'm going to double click on the word power over here in my little layers toolbar. I'm going to hit the stroke key. I'm going to change it to white. Um, I'm just going to, well, do I want it to be a little fatter? I can make it a little fatter. And then I'm also going to add a drop shadow to this. I'm gonna pull the distance out just a smidge, just so it kind of pops a little more. I'm also going to up the opacity to 100, hit okay. That's perfect. Um, something else you can do, I'm not gonna do it right now because I want this to be simple. Um, you can also come back into this same menu and you can say you want a pattern overlay. And I'm not going to show you how to save patterns. You're going to have to figure that one out on your own. Angelia actually showed me how to do it. But if you save different patterns in here, it's just like saving a picture as a pattern, basically. You can change this to look like all kinds of different things. Like, ooh, that's kind of pretty. I kind of like that one. So, like, say I did that and I want to... Ooh, I kind of like that a lot. I almost want to keep it like that. It's just like exciting. I don't know. Um, you could also mess with like the scale in here. So like I could make it striped. I could just make it one rainbow, which I think that's what I'm going for. I think I might actually keep that. It kind of makes me want to make the stroke black though, just so it like pops more. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, didn't even know how great that was going to be. And it came out awesome. Okay, so that's something you can do. Let me just show you really quick. So say you wanted to make a pattern. Um, let's say I'm just gonna go new, say okay. It brought up this for me. Um, let's say I drop this on here. There's just like a picture, a random galaxy picture that I had. Now I'm gonna go, I wanna say it's like, is it, is it under defined pattern? It might, oh yeah. So wait, I think that's how you do it. So it's, you go, um, where did I just find that? I think it was under edit. You go define a pattern. So I'm going to call this galaxy. Um, my spelling is all freaking off. I don't care. My like, I accidentally hit the caps lock key. So now when I go back here, if I want to use that as a pattern overlay, oops, no, 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 no. If I want to use that as a pattern overlay, I can click on this and there it is. So it's like really easy to make your own patterns. It's like from images online. Um, Angelia actually taught me that one. So shout out to you, Angelia. You are the bay. Uh, so then I think I'm going to take that teal drop shadow out. I just don't like it. So I'm just going to hit the little eye right here on the drop shadow. So that just kind of got rid of that. Actually, no, I want a drop shadow. I just don't want that drop shadow. <laughs> I think I'd rather it just be black. I think that looks nicer. Okay, there we go. Um, I'm also going to take the the and of CC. So we're going to double click on the. We're going to hit stroke. Um, we're going to go ahead and keep this black because I think it will just look. Oops, 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 oops. We're going to keep that black because I think it will look the nicest with the most contrast. I'm also going to make it a little bigger. So there we go. And then we're going to do the same thing to of CC. So we're going to, nope, we're going to keep it black. Make it just a smidge thicker. No. And then make it a little bit bigger. I'm also going to like twist it back this way, I think as well. So there's that. Um, the other thing, there's like one more thing I think I haven't done. Make this window a little bigger. There we go. Um, let's see one more thing. Uh, let me check my overlays. So I have these overlays. I'm not actually sure where you get them, but the reason I found out was from Urban Sims. She was the one who like had the link to where you could get them in her video. So I will link her video down below as well so you guys can get it. Um, but this is where like, if you want like little overlays from the game, I have them just like saved in my computer so I can have them. So this is the power of CC. Um, you could also use like emojis, like phone emojis. I do that a lot in my thumbnails. Um, I'm obsessed with this little heart. I think it's like my favorite overlay that exists. I just think it's so cute. So I'm going to pop maybe a couple of these in here just for just. Um, I like that. 
Um, again, I'm going to add a little stroke to this. I just think adding strokes to everything just like makes them kind of pop out. Oh, ooh, not so much, not so much. Makes them kind of just like pop out a smidge. So I'm going to do that. I'm also going to add a little drop shadow like we did earlier. Um, and then I'm actually going to duplicate this layer. So right click on it, duplicate it, heart copy. Then you can kind of drag it, reposition it. I've kind of already taught you all of those fun little basic skills, the repositioning and whatnot. Uh, so there's that one. Okay, how does that look? That's super cute. Uh, should I try to put like one more over here or is that just like overkill? Maybe I should put this one over here. So it kind of like, oh no, no, no. So it just kind of has like some symmetry. What do you guys think? <laughs> I wish I could actually get your guys' opinion while I was doing things. Okay, let's see how that looks. Actually, I think this looks really nice. I think the only thing we're currently missing is like if I wanted to add more of like a glow up, if you know what I'm saying, uh, which I believe that I don't do it very frequently, but that's in like filters. So if I went to like, let's click on not you. I need to click on this layer. The layers get a little confusing after a while. I'm not going to lie about it. There's probably a better way to do things. I want to say it's in like stylize or maybe it's under like noise. I'm actually not sure. Like genuine, generally, genuinely, I'm like not sure. <laughs> There is a way that you can add like some glow up to your Sims though. But honestly, I usually don't do it in here. I will go into Lightroom. So I think that's what we're going to do instead. So I know I use way too many freaking programs. I'm going to go ahead and layers. I'm going to flatten the image. Say, okay. Okay, so this for all intents and purposes, you could 100% use. I think it looks really cute. I like it, but I'm gonna go ahead and save this real quick. This is gonna be power of, I'm gonna put it one because we're gonna have like a second as well. So there's that. I'm actually gonna go pull this image into Lightroom and I'll meet you guys back. Okay, so I've gone ahead and pulled this into Lightroom. I'm going to click on develop at the top. Again, I think I said this earlier, you can get like a free trial of, uh, of Photoshop. I think you can also get a free trial of Lightroom. So it's just something to look into. Lightroom is so not necessary. This is actually a program I use to do real life photography. Like any pictures you see of me on my Instagram or any pictures you see that crop up on Twitter, 90%, not all of them, 90% of them I use a DSLR camera for and I edit and process all of my pictures in Lightroom. Um, so that's the only reason I have knowledge in Lightroom. A lot of people don't use this for their thumbnails. I just have more experience with Lightroom than I do with Photoshop. Like I know more about Lightroom. So that's why I'm choosing to use it. The only thing I really want to do in here is actually focus on my sim. So I'm just going to show you a few little like things I like to do, I guess. So first and foremost, I'm going to play with these eyes, girl. Actually, you know what? I'm lying to you. First, I'm actually going to click on this auto tone and just see what it does, because sometimes auto tone is like amazing and it makes your pictures look so good. And then other times you do it and it's like, what did you just do to my picture? So we're going to do it. Oh, wow. I actually kind of like what it did. It like made the image pop a little more. So I'm going to let that one slide. Um, sometimes auto auto tone, though, is like super ugly. So you just kind of have to like see what you think. So like um, actually, hold on. Let me do this really quick. So this was the before. This is what we're working with now. I actually think the brighter is way more eye catching. And that's something you need to think about. I know this is like so much work for one thumbnail and it takes, uh, trust me, like if I wasn't explaining it to you guys, it doesn't take this long. It's because I'm having to stop and explain what I'm doing. So I'm sorry. I know this is like a lot of information to take in. Um, okay, so I click on this little wheel thing right here, and I'm going to click on Iris Enhance. And I'm also, oh, wait, wait, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm lying to you. <laughs> First, I'm going to zoom in on my image so I can see what I'm doing. Now I'm going to click the Iris Enhance, and I'm going to make the brush smaller, just like I do in uh, Photoshop with the keys. I'm going to make that, oh my gosh, no, 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 Control-Z. Okay, so if you mess up in here, again, just use Control Z. Remember the image is gonna be really small, so it's not like super important that you, oh, 
it's not like super important that you make this like insanely detailed and amazing. These are just like little things that I like to do. Okay, so then you hit done. And so like, this is like the difference, I guess. Like it kind of like lightens the irises a little bit more. Um, I personally do it in all of my photos of myself. So like, I basically just use things like, I think about what I do to myself for when I edit pictures. And so I'll do a lot of those things to sim pictures. I definitely always mess with my eyes. Eyes are such a focal point to an image. And even though in a thumbnail, you may not notice them. I don't know. It's just something that I like. So now I'm going to go ahead and click on clarity and you could do this kind of sloppy, like, I don't know, like this just, you can, you can do this kind of sloppy. Um, I'm just going to go over where the eyelashes are like the lash line. And they look red until you hit done, just so it like shows you where you put it basically. I'm gonna hit done. It just kind of makes the lash area a little bit like darker, I guess. Like see how it like, it just kind of like clarifies it more. See, it's not like so blurry and you can really see how like sharp it is. So there's that. Um, something that I may do on this eye, but not to this one, is you can also go into that same little adjustment feature, click the drop down. You can go into exposure and you can brighten up the eye whites, I guess. This eye over here, I don't feel like really needs it. This one I do. If I was editing a picture of myself or like a client or something, I would be a lot more careful. But since I did not doing that, I'm not being super careful. Okay, so there's that. Uh, something else, I don't know how this is gonna look, but let's just see. You can do skin soft. So let's just, I guess let's just test it out, shoot. Let's just rub it everywhere on all of the skin. It puts the lotion on the skin. Oh my gosh, I'm such a creep. Sorry, this video is like way longer than I thought it was gonna be and it's gonna take like 7 million light years to render. <laughs> so that's cool. Uh, okay, bam, 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 bam. I don't even know if I'm gonna like how this looks. Um, I do this sometimes to pictures of myself depending on how I feel about the picture. Um, I'm not going to lie about it. It just kind of gives your skin like a really soft glow. Um, you'll see what I mean in a second. And I try not to put it like on the eyes. There's a little bit of her skin showing right here. Okay. There we go. Done. Oops. Let's do a comparison. Um, let's control Z that. Does that even do anything? Hold on. Oh, let's take it off. I actually am kind of convinced it looked better without it because you can see more defined features without it. So I don't think we're going to do the skin softening tool. I just don't see the need. Um, <clears throat> You could also go in here and do burn. I think a lot of these things, <clears throat> sorry guys. I think a lot of these things you can also do in PicMonkey. Not a lot of the Photoshop things I did, but a lot of the things I do in Lightroom, you can do in PicMonkey, I'm pretty sure. So you can also select the burn tool and, okay, that was a really bad job. <laughs> Hold on, let me get a little closer. Get a little closer, okay. I'm gonna make the brush a smidge bigger. Just try to be careful. Okay. So that will kind of just like define the brow, I guess. Like I think I'm gonna leave that because I think it actually looks really nice. Um, and I'm trying to think if there's like anything else I could add to this that would like make it be like ba bam. But I think this is actually good. I think it looks good. There's a good shadow to it. There's good structure to the image. It looks exciting and colorful, but also really like simplistic at the same time. And so I think this is the image I'm actually going to go with, guys. This is what you're going to see in that video, which is kind of crazy. So, like I said, I know that was a lot. I probably spend 20 minutes on a thumbnail. This video is probably gonna be longer than that because like I said, I had to explain a lot of things. So uh, just consider that like, 
I don't know. If you really want to strive for that quality though, guys, like this is where it's at. And um, again, again, I know I already said it, but like I am by no means like a super professional. This is just how I do things. Um, this is just one example of a thumbnail. I do so many different types of thumbnails. Uh, but yeah, if you guys like this, you know, be sure you let me know down below if this helped you in any way. And uh, let me know what else you would want to see this month for Coffee Teaches. I know I'm planning a how I film and edit videos. I'm also planning a um how I take pictures of my sims like in game so you can like get poses and stuff like this but let me know if there's something that you guys want to see that I haven't yet talked about or that you just like really want to know um granted I can only do pc tutorials because that's what I run everything on I don't have a mac anymore so I'm sorry for you mac people I love you I used to do my channel on one but uh, anyways you guys I think that's actually going to conclude this video please don't forget to follow me on instagram and twitter I am at coffee yt and please do not forget to follow me on twitch where I stream at three days a week and I'm pretty sure the day this video is going up I have twitch front page time if it's wednesday april 12th I have Twitch front page time this day. And at 1 p.m. Pacific time, I'm going to be on the front page of Twitch, which is kind of crazy. But uh, anyways, you guys, I will see you in a future video. This is Coffee signing off. Bye, guys.